Welcome, 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 everybody, to Online Bible School Friday. <clears throat> and this is the month of July. We have it Monday through Friday. And then Sunday we have church. And then Wednesday we have church. And so, but we can bind, we can bind uh, Wednesday with the Bible class too, sometimes. Sometimes we have two separate services. It just depends on how the Lord wants to do it. I don't have any uh, idea of my own human effort. What I do is I just, the Lord speaks to me what to teach, what to preach, what to minister. It's a gift. It's a gift from God. And so be a partaker of the gift. Amen. Don't get hung up on the outside, although I believe in straightening everything up on the outside too. But uh, get tuned in to what's on the inside. Amen. Because that's where the blessing is at. The gift is in there and it comes out and you receive in Jesus' name. Amen. So we're going to talk about where is the power. Where is the power? If you don't know where the power is, then you can't get hooked up to it. You know, say somebody that lived in a hut their whole life, and they decided, well, I think I'm going to get a paracord. So they got a paracord, and they just plugged it in to itself. Well, in their mind, it might just be circulating. You ever... You ever uh, had somebody go, cuckoo, cuckoo, cuckoo. Well, we can renew our mind. Well, we don't have to be weird or strange or anything like that. Faith is not weird or strange. It's supernatural. Uh, but it's not weird or strange. I've done faith so long. To me, it's totally normal. Uh, it's, it's a normal Christian life, for sure. Supernatural life. But if you don't do faith, then you, that's where the struggle's at. You're showing me somebody that's struggling, and I'll show you somebody that's just not selling out to faith in God. So you don't have to struggle. Dear Lord Jesus, He made this whole thing so you don't have to struggle. So where's the power at? As a little introduction, where's the power at? It says, well, the power is actually at the power plant. Where's the power at? Well, the generator from the power plant goes through the electric lines outside or some places or underground in a tube. And it comes to your house. And then you take your power cord, plug it in to your light. Everything here is powered by electric, a lot of stuff. There's a lot of things. So I think there's, shoot, I don't know how many lights is in here. It looks like there's just two lights, but there's lights Shoot, there's lights everywhere. See? You light up, lighting, and so everything looks good, and you can see good and see well. So where's the power at? Well, the power's in God. All the power's in God. Well, He gave the power to you through Jesus. He's not, he's not the one conducting power anymore he give it to you and he back up what you say especially if you're saying what the word of God says okay so if you have a Bible open it up and give you a couple seconds here uh, Proverbs 18 21 the power of life and death is in the Lord's hands and everybody said amen except that's not what the Bible teaches the power of life and death is in your hands. I had a guy one time, he said, if that's true, then how come more people don't live longer? I said, because they're going by the enemy's plans. See, the devil don't have the power of life and death anymore. God, Jesus, came, took them away from him. And says, well, see, God has power of life and death. He determines when you live and He determines when you die. No. Because He gave it to you. Psalms 118, verse 17 says, 
You will live and not die and declare the works of the Lord. Why even pray that? Because it's in the Bible and He said to do it. So if it's in the Lord's hands, well, wouldn't it just, well, if the Lord wants me to die, I'll die. And if the Lord, it's not up to God, though. Hello? I can't find nowhere that God said He's going to kill people. Well, now they participating with death. Some people are. And even Christians that don't know what the Word says, they participate with death and disease and poverty and lack and just all the struggles of life. Uh, but the Bible teaches against that for the believer, the one that has asked Jesus into the, inside of them. So what do we do? Well, the power of life and death... Proverbs 18, 21. The power of life and death is in your tongue. It's not in the Lord's hands. Mm -mm. Uh, it's not consistent with Scripture to think, well, when God gets ready for me, I'll just die. Well, if God said the power of life and death is in your tongue, and you're saying, well, when God gets ready for me, I'll just die, but that's not what the Bible says to pray or do, then who are you giving your power to? Not God, because He gave it to you. So really you can get underneath the devil's domain if you don't watch it, uh, thinking that you're you know, being spiritual and, and right and everything, and you find out, hey, no. You know, if you're confessing you're struggling all the time, you're putting yourself under the devil's domain. So you don't curse yourself. Don't speak death over yourself. Don't speak death over people. Now, Deuteronomy says, The power of life and death I set before you, blessing and cursing. If you have any trouble, choose life. Don't choose death. If you have any trouble, choose the blessing. Don't choose the curse. See, But see, the enemy, He's what he does is he even does it through a religiosity that they instill it into your mind that you don't know when you're going to die. But the Bible plainly says in Psalms 91, the last verse there, with long life I'll satisfy you, not with short life. And then unbeknowing people, they will say, well, you know, some people are created to live a short life and some people are created to live a long life. And we don't know, and we don't. We don't. Shouldn't even question God about that. Well, God don't have anything to do with killing people. John 10:10 10, 10 says the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. Anything that has to do with killing, stealing, or destroying is not God. See, the power of life and death is in your tongue. What are you saying? Especially if it's biblical. Now, if it's it's biblical, you can back it up with God's Word. See, the Bible says in, uh, in Genesis that they was uh, 120 years old. Uh, this, is before the, uh, this is before the curse of the law. So they wasn't under the law. They was still, there wasn't no law yet. And uh, the curse of the law is, anybody's practicing the curse, or anybody's practicing the law is under the curse. The Bible's plain on that. Why? See, so you don't curse yourself. See, don't curse yourself. But, well, I got this, I got that, I did this, I got, had one lady, something bad happened, and she said, well, reason why something bad happened, I stole a roll of toilet paper out of the nursing home bathroom. No, something don't bad, something bad did, something got messed up because you're under the attack of the enemy. Now, should you steal nursing home toilet paper? No. But you got to remember, God's not the one punishing you. He'll give you some toilet paper. He'll give you some wipes. I mean, he'll, he'll just make it where it's supernatural, where, man, you'll wind up with cases of stuff. See? He'll, he, you don't have to steal nothing. It's, uh, he'll, he'll, you'll, you'll just wind up with it. I mean, he'll just blow it up in your yard. <laughs> I mean, it don't matter. You could be on a desert island and uh, start talking life 
So look at this. That's in Proverbs 18, chapter 18. The power of life and death is in your tongue. So what are you saying? See? Oh, so-and-so's a mess. Or this is a mess or whatever. You got to say a little bit of something. I understand that to pray, to pray. But when, you, when it turns into a lifestyle, that's not working good. And I've seen some people, they never do get past whatever it is that you got hung up on to start with. Well, you can get past anything, but you do it with your mouth. See, you let this word right here go down to your eyes, say, yep. And then it goes down to your heart, and, yep. And it comes up out of your mouth, yep. And then what happens is you start agreeing with life, the life side. I've been on both sides, and I like, no, the death side's not, no, 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 no. The word of God is perfect, Samuel. The word of God is perfect, see? And so then your decision making are a lot better. Your decisions are changing. Well, why? You make better decisions because you're basing it on the Word of God. Just act like you don't know nothing. And really you don't. But when you do God's Word, you're like, ah, this is good. This is good. Just have it soak in a little bit. You don't got to be in a hurry you can just enjoy your life you know uh, you don't have to just well this guy he's up 20 hours a day and he sleeps four and just be you just be you you don't have to compare yourself with somebody else there's a lot of times something's going on so well that's not what I'm supposed to do I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing see God said to do these online Bible classes and a lot of people has really gotten blessed. They've gotten saved. They've gotten healed. They've got. They've been growing in God. I mean, it's just it's really encouraging. And then Sunday church people just love it, and uh, it's just really good. It's always a different. So we're we're just in the vein of the Word of God. Get into the Word. It's like one guy said, "Well, give me a word. Give me a word." It's, uh, in the parking lot in front of the Dollar Tree. <laughs> and he hadn't seen me in a long time, but he watches those videos. Well, he was parked this way, and I was parked that way, by our vehicles. He said, give me a word, give me a word. And I sat there and I prayed. And God said, just tell him to get into the word. Right here. And then watch your mouth. And he's like, well, I want a little bit more than that. <laughs> If God would have give you a big long thing, would you have done it? Well, He'd give you a little short thing to do. I feel like that's what God's saying today. Get into the Word and watch your mouth. See? Get into the Word, and when you do, you fill your heart and mouth with the Word, and only speak the Word. It don't matter what other people are saying. God's not going by what they're saying. God's going by what you're saying. I mean, there's people that they, they just don't know the Word. So they're just talking out of their own head. Even when they pray and stuff, even ministers sometimes, they're not in, they don't know the Word. I did a little survey one time. And uh, I just asked people, I said, you read the Bible? And they said, well, every once in a while. So, but do you know the Bible? Well, no, not really. Do you believe the Bible? Oh, yeah, I believe the Bible. Well, they didn't know nothing. I mean, uh, how, if, how can you believe something that you don't even know? So you got to get in the Word of God. And I give people different scriptures sometimes. I said, now, take them just like medicine three times a day. Every, and, then, and then as needed, as it comes up as needed. Well, why would you do that? Because it changed your life forever. See? I mean, you, you, you get a glimpse of the, even just this one scripture. The, the power of life and death is in your tongue. Uh, people pray all the time now. You know, no, God, now if you want to do it, you know, God, if it's your will. That stuff's, that stuff's uh, bogus. No. What are you saying over that situation? Say, so speak life. 
The Bible says in Deuteronomy, if you have any trouble, speak life. If you have any trouble, just look it up in Psalms 118, chapter 118, verse 17, that they live and not die and declare the works of the Lord. I know people that's been living on that for years. Oh, they still, you know, they still get treated and get help and, 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 and you know, things like that, of course. We believe in doctors, too. But put the Word of God on a higher level. So you say that all night when you get ready to go to bed. All night long, God is good. God is good. I sure am glad I'm free. sure am glad I'm free. I'm glad I'm healed, saved, set free, and delivered. That's what salvation is. So when you do that, what happens is you start growing. I have people text me sometimes, healed, saved, set free, and delivered. That's the definition of, of, of salvation. See, or they'll put salvation and then they'll put the marks on the side as healed, saved, set free, delivered, and financially blessed. No, I'm not participating with broke, busted, and disgusted. See, broke, busted, and disgusted don't belong to you. I don't care if you're living in a cardboard box <laughs> and you're watching this on a stolen cell phone. I don't care. See, you start speaking life. You start saying you don't have a desire for that anymore. And you know what will happen? Now God's going to confirm the word with signs following. What's he do? He starts doing it. He starts moving it. He starts where you don't you don't like you don't care anything about that chemical anymore, whatever it is. Just keep saying, I don't care nothing about it. No matter what it is. No matter if it's you know, you whatever it is, it don't matter what it is, I just don't care for it no more. I don't care nothing about it. Oh you might you might have just loved it. Oh woo But then you you say there's a realization that comes to you like, no, nah, I don't need that. I don't need it. I don't need it. I don't need it, and I don't want it, and I didn't desire for it changes. And instead of making excuses to go that way, I'm making excuses to just do the Word of God. Yeah, just like today. You made an excuse to watch this. See, excuses are not always bad. You can make it. You can make excuses, not to participate with something, or you can make excuses to participate with the Word of God. This this has been rolling over in me shoot, since early morning, morning time, and uh, God puts that all together, and then He says, "Okay, now speak it out with revelation knowledge." So you pray along those lines, study along those lines, and be consistent. See, it don't, it don't matter if it looks like you're losing everything. Uh, maybe you've lost everything a few times, but uh, this time is different. All the enemy, he'll, he'll th try, to, try to throw whatever he can, but uh, you just keep slinging the word. <laughs> One guy said, just keep slinging the blood of Jesus. You know, that means healed, saved, set free, delivered, and financially blessed. That's what the blood did for us. And so just keep slinging the word. The circumstances of life will, are subject to change. It don't matter. I've seen people that was on the bottom, under the bottom, under the barrel, looked like it was rotten and looked like they were rotten. And uh, now they're on the top. See? So how'd they get there? Power of life and death's in their tongue. They quit, they, they quit talking death and agreeing with death and said, no. I'm not going this way. I'm, I'm just not going to do that. I'm just not going to go that way. And they make a mistake and go that way and keep doing it for a while. And uh, but the degree is broken. See, it can't. It cannot dominate them like it used to. It can't dominate them. Whatever it was, it was all wrapped up in whatever it was. It don't matter what it is. Um, it could be doubt, anxiety, worry, sickness, disease, broke, busted, disgusted, whatever it is, it don't matter. Being addiction or whatever, it don't matter. 
uh, you, you can't, it, it's lost its power over you. Why? Because the power of life and death is your decision. See? It's your decision. Uh, now, if you just keep saying, man, that thing is so powerful, I can't never overcome it, then you won't. But then God don't have nothing to work with when you talk goofy like that. So what you got to do? <clears throat> you have to start talking with the power of God. You have to just, if you can't, if you can't remember anything else today, just remember, no, whatever it is trying to bug you, is no, not this time. Mm -mm, no. Not this time. Not today. No. Uh -uh, not this time. Mm -mm, not this time. If that's all you can remember, do it. No, not this time. <laughs> the answer of your mouth, joy. And uh, remember, you can do this. It's like Isaiah 55 says, hold everything. Hey, hold it. See? No, I got the money. No, don't, don't be talking about it's coming. No, I've got the money. Whatever it is. No, I am the healed. It's the power of life and death in your tongue. You're the one that decides. God has given you the tools, which is the Word of God. He's given you the tools to do this. And you can do it. It's right there where you're at. No, I have it. I have the job. If you're believing for a job. No, I have the job. No, I have the money. I have it. Mm -mm. No, I honor God first. You honor God first and man, things start working. I mean, phew. it just starts coming. You just, oh, I've got it north, south, east, and west, and up, down, all around. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And God, in return, pours out a blessing on you that you can't even receive. <laughs> How does he do that? He's God, that's why. See? You know, why do some people win and some people lose? Why does it look like somebody's a has-been and somebody a wannabe, you know, something like that, or used to be? Well, they start talking that. You have to just say... You don't have to scream, holler, and yell, and fuss, and fight, and everything else. He says, no. Mm -mm. No. It's, I, I'm doing this. I'm, I, I'm doing what the Word of God says now. I'm doing this. I'm speaking life over that situation. Everybody about to be speaking death. No, I speak life over it. I speak peace. I say I have. You just say what you have. You know, we wear the best, drive the best, eat the best, have the best. Blessing of the Lord maketh rich, addeth no sorrow with it. I don't have the sorrow. Mm -mm. No. And then the way you do that, honor God first. Pay your bills second. Save some. Just keep doing that. Boom, boom, boom. Three punches. You just keep doing it. And you'll grow. You, you honor God. When I go to bed, I have a written out devotion that God gave me, and I just read it. And I pray. And I do whatever I want to do after that. And then in the morning, pray in the Spirit for like an hour. And then everything I do is faith-based. Everything I do is faith-based because I, want, I just want to stay pleasing to God. I don't get off on those side notes. <laughs> this is a faith scripture. Why? Because faith goes by what you say. And if you're saying the scriptures, shoot, you can't go wrong. You can't go wrong saying scripture. You can't go wrong praying scripture. And I pray in the spirit for about an hour or so. And just keep myself built up. Pray as I go. Something comes up, I got to do something. But I just pray as I go. But I don't just pray as I go all the time. I do pray as I go all the time. But before that, I have just a devotional time, just hanging out with God for like an hour or so. When I first get up, start the day. And I might drink some coffee or, or drink some uh, something. 
but I enjoy my life and I don't let pressure come. I don't let pressure come. So as people say, but you're living on the edge all the time. Well, I just, I, I don't even look at it like that. I just look at it as, I just go by the Spirit. Well, what does God want me to do? Well, I know He wants me to get, do Monday through Friday Bible school. And I know He don't want me just to talk out of my head something I, you know, I don't know. What did He tell you to do? That's what you do. So do that. Well, he's talking right now to you and He's bearing witness with you. To speak. Whatever it is, speak over it, life. See? Your job. Well, God will create a job for you. He will. I remember one time a lady we prayed for, she was in my singles class. And uh, I just sensed in my spirit, I said, go out there to this certain company. And if they don't have a job <coughs> for you, you got so much favor with God and man. You got favor with God and man. They'll create a job for you. Well, they went out there to this certain office, and the guy said, "Well, um, I don't know what you would do out here." She said, "Well, I work for you. Do what you're gonna do." So he said, well, he told one of the guys, maintenance guys, couple of, he said, "Get that uh, desk." and bookshelf and everything get get that desk and chair and everything and and roll a chair he said just put it about 15 feet in front of my office door over to the side a little bit and uh they'll that and just put on their receptionist you know information manager so it was a big complex and uh, so it was the doors that just came in the building everybody wanted to go in that building had to go through them doors and they had, she had a directional map, and she also was real good with directions. And then also she, if they was there to see somebody, she would just buzz them and tell them that they're there. It was pretty cool. But they didn't have that before. Usually they just came in and did that the offices were all marked. And so they just came in and went to the person's office. But she was a receptionist for like 10 offices there. And uh, so they liked her so well that they just stayed her. They just, she, she retired out there. And uh, I mean, you see, so don't, don't take no for an answer. Don't, 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 don't start agreeing with no's. Start agreeing with yes. The power of life and death is in your tongue. And those that eat it and love it, see. So love the word of God is what it's saying. And don't be speaking death over, over, over situations like that. Uh, you know, speak, speak life. Speak life, speak life. I love that. And uh, Deuteronomy, if you have any trouble, blessing and cursings there, life and death there, don't participate with cursing. Don't participate with the curse. Don't curse yourself. Don't be talking about I'm crippled. Don't be talking about I'm in pain. Don't be talk. That's cursing yourself. No, I got life. The life of God flowing through my body. The life of God's moving through my veins. The life of God is f flowing. See, but why do you do that? Because you're speaking life. See, I'm healthy, wealthy, and wise, and good looking. Amen. <laughs> And that's okay. You're made in the image of God, so you're healthy, wealthy, and wise, and good-looking. Praise God. So you're healthy, wealthy, and wise, and good-looking. And you've given up broke, busted, and disgusted. Amen. And you've taken the salvation of Jesus into you. So now you're healed, saved, set free, and delivered, and financially blessed. Amen. So that's where the blessing is. Then hook up with us. Praise God. There's... Man, there's 30, almost 32,000 views on some of these videos. We've got one that jumps about 1,000 every week to 10 days, maybe 25 days sometimes, jumps 1,000. So we got one video that's pushing to 24,000, getting ready to jump to 25. And so uh, everybody, you know, you participate. Shoot, everybody just throw in a little bit. 
Shoot, we can do some great things for God, even greater things. You can help us get the word out in a greater way. Help us get the gospel out in a greater way. And in return, God blesses you. Amen. So I want to encourage you today. And and where is the power at? In your tongue. Proverbs 18, 21. Life and death is in your tongue, the power of a tongue. It's not in the Lord's hands. It's not in the Lord's hands. He backs up what you say if it's the Word of God. But the power is up to you. What are you releasing? You're either releasing the dark power or you're releasing the Word of God power. I, I see sometimes somebody will say something and uh, They'd be talking about how broke they are or something. It's okay, I agree you're broke. You don't have nothing. Oh, no, no, I don't want you to agree with that. I said, well, you're going to have what you say. It don't matter what I'm praying. So you give me something to work with here. <laughs> you know? See, when you turn loose of what's in your hand, God turns loose of what's in His hand. So where's the power? It's in you. It's just like you take that electric plug and pow- plug it in. Well, God's the power plant. But we have the power. We have the ability to stay plugged in. So we're the one that can stay in, plugged in with the power. So Deuteronomy, I mean uh, Proverbs 18, 21. Look that up. And you'll be so glad you did. And then be sensitive. Be sensitive today. <clears throat> the life and death and the power of your tongue. I had a friend and she had a lung disease and it was just eating a hole in her lung and they just sent her home basically to die. She was on a pick line. She was her mama, they'd, she'd already signed her will. She, her mama and her husband was there and that lady had two little kids. She had a lung disease that was killing her. And she just started saying, I'm gonna live and not die and carry the works of the Lord. Proverbs, she got a hold of some good scriptures on life. She was a young lady, her kids were just little. And uh, so she started saying that, and she started saying she had a new set of tires on her car, too. So she got the set that somebody came along and gave her a set of tires on her car. And they just basically sent her home to die. I mean, the pick line was, it was, it, they, she was dying. It was, it was just rotting with the, with the lung disease. And she just started saying, no, I'm going to live and not die and turn the works of the Lord. Isaiah 53, 5, by his drops, I'm healed. See, 1 Peter 2, 24, by his stripes I were healed. So if I were healed, I am healed. Matthew 8, 17, himself took our infirmities and bore our sicknesses, and by his stripes I am the healed. So she started saying that, see. And she started saying the power of life and death in my tongue. Devil, you can't kill me. I bind and gag you in Jesus' name. Uh, and no, this disease and mess is not from God. Because God don't have any diseases or messes to give you. He went to the cross, took all that for you, so you don't take it. See? No, He's not the one giving you sickness and disease. He's the one giving you life more abundantly. John 10.10, 10, thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. Right below that in the same passage, it says, But Jesus has come. I have come to give you life and more abundantly. Well, stealing, killing, and destroying is not life and more abundantly. So you be at peace today, you be at health today, and remember, where is the power at? It's in your tongue. Life and death are in the power of your tongue, not in the Lord's hands. So God gave you the power to ter- determine life and death over your life, and when you say, well, it's just up to God. No, it's not up to God, because He gave it to you. So if He gave it to you, and you're saying whenever He wants to kill me, He can, Guess who you're talking to? Devil. You're giving the permission to the devil to kill you and have a miserable life along the way. Oh, no, I'm not. Yes, you are. (laughs) God's not going to rewrite the Bible for you. There's nowhere in the Bible that says, well, when God gets ready to kill me, he just killed me. No, it tells you just the opposite. Power of life and death is in your tongue. Psalms 91 says, with long life, I'll satisfy you long life and the devil keeps instilling into people's minds now you don't want to live a long time well sure you do why because you can win more you can win longer you can use your faith and and you could build your faith you could build your wealth 
you could build your strength. See? Why? Because you live longer and use your faith longer. And you'll grow your faith grows. It, it, your life's not going to be the way it is now. It's going to even be better. See? So don't look at death like that. Don't look don't look at all the people that's participating with death. Look at the ones that are participating with life. Just run your reference. Look up the word life in the Bible. Man, it's from Genesis to Revelation. It's in your favor. So you have a good one. You have a great one. And remember the love of God shed abroad in your heart. See, what's it, what is it? It says 32. I mean, uh, Proverbs 18. Power of life and death in your tongue. And those that love it. Love what? Love the light side. Love the word side. Love what God's saying about you. Don't listen to all them goofy cliches that you pick up at religious establishments. <laughs> Go by the word of God and you'll love it. He always produces life. Choose life and not death. Have a great one.